My work is, uh, there's a, a context to that, and that is, um, it's really all revolving around uh, my association uh, with the Dalai Lama, uh, someone that I've met uh, 40 years ago, uh, 1972, at his home. Uh, so I have always been uh, involved uh, either with him uh, or with aspects uh, of Tibet. And this work uh, consists of uh, uh, co-authoring a number of books with him. Uh, I have uh, a new one that I co-authored with him uh, coming out in um, January of 2013. And uh, this is it. The Wisdom of uh, Compassion. Stories of remarkable encounters and timeless insights. So I feel very privileged that uh, I have this opportunity to uh, co-author a book like this with him, uh, to um, travel around the world with him, and uh, meeting quite remarkable people. Uh, and um, I was able to write about, document, like a fly on the wall, uh, some of these stories, uh, which are quite um, compelling in its own right, and it also illustrates uh, some of the key ideas of the Dalai Lama, not necessarily uh, Buddhist ideas, but uh, ideas that are, have universal appeal, uh, that, ha that is of a very secular nature. In 2004, uh, I was involved in inviting him to uh, Vancouver uh, together with UBC and uh, it was a very interesting dialogue involving the Dalai Lama, Desmond Tutu and Shirin Ibadi uh, who was the first Iranian to uh, obtain the fee uh, Peace Prize. Uh, so it was a very remarkable conversation and the upshot, the outcome of that dialogue was that um, how do we keep up the momentum that was generated in Vancouver? Um, how do we provide a legacy so that uh, these things, this, this particular dialogue which revolves around how to balance educating the mind with educating the heart, how can we continue with our effort to disseminate that in our community. And the outcome of that, the legacy of that, was the creation of the Dalai Lama Center for Peace and Education uh, in Vancouver. So uh, we started talking about that with the Dalai Lama in 2004. And then uh, finally uh, in Germany, uh, I had another chance to continue the conversation with him. Uh, and he agreed to allow his name to be used uh, for this uh, initiative. Uh, so the Dalai Lama Center is very focused uh, on how to educate young people's heart in order to balance their academic achievement. Uh, and by that we mean that uh, are there some part of the education and learning process uh, of young people that need ramping up. Uh, so, what the Dalai Lama have said to us is that uh, it's very important that we uh, nurture our IQ, our intelligence, uh, but it's also equally important uh, that we foster uh, our emotional and social intelligence as well. Uh, and part and parcel of that is that uh, we need to uh, have an awareness of our own self. Uh, we need to be aware of the emotions and feelings of the other people around us. Uh, so in that sense, uh, social and emotional intelligence, uh, the ability to be mindful uh, of other people's uh, uh, feeling and emotion, uh, these are very important part uh, in our learning process. And studies have shown uh, that uh, those who have uh, some competency uh, in uh, social and emotional learning, uh, these students tend to do well 
uh, with their peers, that they get along well with them, they collaborate well with them, uh, they are much better at uh, impulse control. And um, the bottom line also is that these students tend to do better uh, academically as well. So I, I really uh, take heart from uh, the example of the Dalai Lama that uh, he can tell people about these things and we understand that intellectually. But for me to actually uh, have a first person sense of him actually doing it through discipline, through pers perseverance, through ingraining some of these things into his everyday life so that it becomes habitual for him. These are the more practical elements that allow you to actually make some headway. So for example, you alluded to the idea of, well, I can meditate or I can be mindful, but uh, I have so little time. You know, I have so many demands on my life, uh, family and work and so on. It's not really practical to do so. But uh, if I look to the example of the Dalai Lama, I see him doing this every day at about the same type of time. And, and studies have shown that you don't need to have a long period of time to ingrain this habit into your daily routine. You start with, say, five minutes doing something. And then if you do it for a month or two, it automatically, it, it, uh, it reorients your neural circuitry so that your whole being, uh, it's like flossing your teeth. You know, you do it every morning and after a while, it's no big deal. So having this type of perseverance, discipline uh, and habit uh, is a very important thing. And then the other part of it is really to uh, not to isolate this. If you, take, if you take an example of mindfulness, you don't isolate that and say, that, look, I'm going to do this for five minutes and then I'm going to forget about it. But being mindful means if you're talking to someone, you, you are fully focused. Uh, in that interaction. If you're writing, you're fully focused in that activity. So after some time, you create a culture of being mindful, of being present. So I think this is a very good antidote to all the multitasking uh, and social media and uh, texting that uh, young people are involved in. And you can do the same thing. Uh, writing is a very, very good uh, activity in which you can develop your ability to be mindful. Walking is another thing, you know, if you are really careful and you're focused on the, uh, uh, all the elements that constitute lifting a foot, setting it down and, and walking, all these things uh, could be a part of your everyday culture of being mindful. So the kind of thing I'm taking away from the example of the Dalai Lama is that um, for all of us who understand all these good things, these are the kind of things that allow us to have a sense of well-being, to feel fulfilled, to feel contented. Uh, this has nothing to do with a more hedonistic uh, type of uh, behavior, hedonistic type of pleasure. Uh, and uh, it is these things that allow us to have a true sense of happiness, a true sense of uh, well-being.